You know, we all want to be there for our friends and family when they're going through a rough time, but because there's no handbook on how to do it right, sometimes we do nothing at all. So here to help empower us to be our best supportive selves is Kathy Donovan with all of her good energy. Love her. Kathy, Kathy, how do we just start cutting through the awkwardness that we might feel when someone is just going through a tough time? Yeah, it's awkward. I think connection is the most important thing, Tracy. <clears throat> you know, when people are going through a rough time, they feel ostracized. They feel like nobody understands what they're experiencing. So we want to be there for them. And it's unfortunate that we're not better educated around how to be there for people. Uh, first things first, though, we want to make sure that we understand when somebody else, whether it's a coworker, a friend or a family member is going through it, it's not about us. It's about them. And so we want to put our biases, our judgments, our triggers, our traumas to the side so that we can hold space with compassion and empathy for what they're going through. Ooh, that's a really good point. Okay, let's get into some scenarios because there are so many. What do we do when someone loses their job? How can we support them? Yeah, it's hard because very often people are blindsided by that situation. Yeah. <clears throat> so our job, first of all, is not to fix it. We're not there to fix it. Oprah Winfrey taught me that I can't take anything off anybody else's journey. I'm there to walk with them, not take the journey for them, right? right. So we want to make sure that we're good listeners. I think sometimes that is the greatest gift you can give to somebody is just being there to listen. And if someone is not a talker, you can still be there for them, send them a message or a card or an email or make a little phone call just to say, you know, I know what happened. It must be really hard. I'm thinking about you. That's pretty simple. Yeah. And it's something you can do without pressuring that person to talk if they're not comfortable talking. If somebody is comfortable talking, though, we want to encourage them to speak uh, freely and we want them to know we're actually listening. I'm sure you know this too. Sometimes when I've shared something that's on my heart, I can tell within about 20 seconds you've stopped listening to me and you're thinking about something to do with yourself. So we want to make sure they know we're there, nod your head, mm -hmm. say things like tell me more or you know, what do you mean by that or if it's comfortable just reach over and put your hand on their arm at a moment that feels appropriate so they know you're present with them. That's, that's the emotional connection we want to create. Once that's established, whether it's in that conversation or a follow-up, we want to help that person reframe because losing your job is trauma. Absolutely. So we want to, but we want to take our power in the present moment and look to the future by reframing the situation, ask questions like, what skills did you learn on the job? What do you think you're taking with you into the future? What would be your ideal job? What do you really want to do? And start empowering that person to look to the future so they can take some action. You know, I love that because then you're offering hope. Yes. You're not even just there as a sounding board. You're actually saying, well, let's dream a little bit together. Exactly. You know, let's think about the great future that you're going to have. And I love that. So moving on from uh, relationships is tough. We talked about breaking up at the top of the show, but it could be a platonic relationship. Sure. It could be a romantic relationship. It's over. It is tough. How can we be there for someone who is going through that? Well, we shouldn't hide. That's one thing, you know, when, when intimate relationships break up, sometimes there's like this scattering of people. Don't hide from somebody going through something if, if you care about them. Make sure you hold space in the sense that you stay in your grounded power though. Don't get into the feelings with them. You're not meant to take their journey. You're meant to stay in your grounded strength because they need your strength. So. Leave your opinions at the door. Mm -hmm. Leave your sort of toxic positivity too. We want to be careful with that because you can easily remind them of how well off they are, how somebody else has it worse than they do or whatever to kind of calm your energy, but it's not about you. So put your glass half full away and let that person just be in the mess because yes. life is messy. It's part of the adventure yeah. and people need to know that whatever it is they're going through, they're accepted. I love it. Be in the mess and don't diss the ex. Oh, they might get back together, <laughs> That's a hard right? No. Yeah. Okay, uh, I want to talk about death because we hear about it. We go running for the hills, yep. right? It's yep. it's it's awkward because you don't know what to say. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't know how to be there. You don't know how to be supportive. How do we deal with someone who is experiencing loss in the form of death? Yeah, you, you said it exactly right. We're so afraid of death. All of us have a fear of death yeah. until we come to terms with that. Yeah. Um, and, and when that happens, we just freeze. We don't know what to say or do. Now, you can say to somebody simply, I'm very sorry for your loss. 
that's meaningful. Yeah. You can send a card, you can send a text, a note, make a phone call, you can do some cooking, you can help out with the children. There's something you can do. So please never, never, never say, let me know if I can do anything for you. Mm. Because a person grieving will not have the strength to come find you, mm -hmm. to ask you to help them. Mm -hmm. We need, and women are leaders and women can do everything, but especially women need to know that somebody's got our back. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do is make them feel comforted and seen. Because look, we're tribal. We want to feel no matter what we're going through, that we, whatever we're feeling is okay. Yeah. And that we're accepted exactly as we are. We need our community. We need to not be gaslit. Yep. We need other people to validate that we are down in the gully with yep. our feelings. Yep. And even if you, you're, you're not going to be able to fix it, but help them carry it, right? Help them carry it. Yeah. And if it's beyond your scope, help them get some help. Beautiful. Kathy, thank you so much.